Hello everyone. We're here in today in DaVinci Resolve 18. We're going to do a animated 3D cube with pictures all around it sliding across the floor with a nice picture in the background as a backdrop. A little about me before I get started. I have to use this on-screen keyboard due to health reasons. I'll do my best to keep it out of the way, but it it's going to be in the way to a point. Um, with that said, let's get started. Start out up in the media pool, right click. Go to New Fusion Composition. You can name it if you'd like. Or make it longer. Uh, I'm going to leave it at five seconds. Now you're going to want most of these pictures pretty much symmetrical. You can adjust them to a point, but if you have like a square picture along with a um, rectangle one like on a cell phone, um, you're going to want them relatively the same size. They are adjustable to a point, but not like a third, you know, the picture itself. All right, now we're going to grab that composition, bring it down to the timeline. And let's go to Fusion page. Let's start out with hitting shift and spacebar. Pull up the tool menu. Click off all the nodes right there. Type in cube 3D. Okay, let's um, grab a 3D camera, double or triple tap right here on the notepad so no nodes are selected. Pipe it right into the cube. It'll automatically make a merge 3D. There's going to be a whole mess of nodes by the time we're done here. Select that Merge 3D and then get a uh, render. Pipe it in the media out. You should have a white screen. Drag a Merge 3D into the left viewer. You should have a camera and a box. Now, you, I'm, if you're not familiar with the 3D world, you can use the middle mouse wheel to navigate through it. I cannot use, I don't have a middle mouse wheel on my controller, so I have to do a uh, drop-down box. Um, but I understand it's the middle mouse wheel is very intuitive and easy to do, so that's what I would do if I could. Okay. 
Double click right about there so no nodes are selected. Grab my image plane. You're going to want to use your, your backdrop picture. Open the inspector under transform. Unlock these values. This will allow you to adjust the size of your image plane. As you see in the left viewer. Drag your uh, image plane to your right viewer. Adjust your image plane in the right viewer. We'll probably have to readjust it at some point anyways. Go over to the inspector under transform, down to scale. Use the X and the Y value to adjust the image plane. You probably see I'm over in the inspector on the right hand side sizing this picture. Go ahead and size it accordingly with whatever you have. If you like what I do, would you subscribe, give me a like, and smack that bell so you don't miss any notifications for my upcoming tutorials. Let's drag that into the left viewer. Then drag the Merge 3D into the left viewer. Now let's do the camera and pull the camera back. So drag the camera node in the left viewer. I'm having a hard time grabbing a hold of the camera handles. I'm going to have to rotate the scene.
Now drag the Merge 3D back into the left viewer. Pull that back far enough that the lines are on the outside of the uh, picture frame, which is your plane. Now select the cube. Go to the uh, Inspector under Transform, unlock the scale again, and now we're going to adjust the size of the cube. If you know your uh, dimensions of your pictures, um, you could just t type the uh, the value in there. Um, mine are all squares, so they're pretty basic. I'm not sure if that's going to be a definite figure yet, but let's check it, see what it looks like when we get it in front of the picture. Select the 3D cube node. Then grab the handles of the cube and adjust it accordingly. You have to make sure when you adjust the image plane that it's back far enough that it leaves a shelf for the cube as you'll see in a moment. Drag your Merge 3D into your right viewer so you can see your cube. Okay, going to go smaller with it. Okay, I'm at a 0 0.215. That looks about right. Open the inspector under transform, translation, X, Y, and Z values to adjust the position of the cube. I'm going to resize my cube. It's just a little bit large. Now 
Okay, I just changed my cube to 0 0.2. Okay, all the colors on the box coincide with the inlet on the cube node. All right, so let's select the cube node, or uh, yeah, the cube node. Right click, copy. Come right down below it where I'm at. Click several times. Make sure no nodes are selected. Right click and then hit paste instance. Now let's go ahead and bring our media down in. This is where things start to get messy. Now let's go ahead and name these pictures of what side, you know, they're going to be left, right, front, and back. I'm going to re rename my first one front. I'm going to name my second one left picture. Doesn't really matter how you how you uh, you name them just as long as you understand what they are. This one's going to be a right picture. You are definitely going to want to rename them. Or you're going to get all confused here in a little bit. And the last one will be back picture. Actually, we're probably going to bring in one more and try to put it on the top. And this one's going to be the top picture. Okay, we're going to tie them all into the 
original cube, not the instance, first. I'm going to start with the front. If you look at these, they're all going to tell you what they are. Right there, that's the front, so I'll connect to that one. Now the left, we'll point at it until we find the left one. One's right here. Now the right side. It's crucial you get these correct. Now the back. That one there. Okay, now we want to take, well, let's get this top one done here. And yours may be coming off that node in a different spot than mine. Now as you see looking over at your your cube, your your colors stayed under the picture. So we're gonna go ahead and correct that now. Select the uh well. Oh. No, let's not do that. Now let's do this first. Now we've got to connect all these to the instance the same way. So the front. The front. Okay, there's my left. Now the right. Now the back.
That's why you want to double check them. That one picked up the bottom. Okay. Go ahead and take a minute and double check all them. Okay, now select your instance. Go up to materials. We want to take the front, left, right, back, and top and make them all white. As you can see straight away, now the first picture looks good. All right, you want to want to go in the transform and the inspector on the rotation, the Y axis. Rotate that and make sure they're all good. Okay, mine are. You don't want to bring that in right about there. You want some uh, shelf in front of the uh, cube. Okay, let's go over here and put some transforms in. These are just 2D transforms. They go in all the pipes going down to the uh, instance. Just hold shift down and when you get it over top of the pipe and it changes color, just let go.
Okay, now we got to connect these two, uh, the cube and the instance together. And it all automatically create this merge. Then drag the merge 3D1 into the left viewer. Now select the instance. Go over here in the inspector under transform. In translation, right click the Y value. And select the instance. And now we have a copy of the cube that we created. Now we want to lower it down and line it up at the very bottom between the two Mike on a one viewer for this we want to run that copy of that right down to the very to where the two barely meet adjust it by using the Y value as you see the copy is lowering down at this moment On the rotation, the Y axis, you can rotate it so you can see it better. You want to adjust it so there's barely a gap between the two. That looks pretty good. Now, as you see, the reflection we want on the bottom is not upside down. It's right side up, just like the pictures above it. Now, we'll go to the transforms over here that we just put in. We'll select the front one. I know that's my front picture. And go right here and flip it. If you look at mine, my reflection flipped. Do that with all of them. Then to check them, select the instance, rotation, Y value, and rotate it and make sure you got the corrected uh, reflection.
Okay, mine is correct. You don't really have to do the top one. I'll get these nodes lined up a little bit better, so hopefully you can decipher what's going on there. Make a little sense out of this mess. Select the image plane. Go with the inspector. We're going to size this accordingly. I figured early on would be readjusting this image plane again. You want to be sure to raise the image plane enough to where you have a decent shelf for that cube to set on. You're probably going to want something like that. Let's move this camera back more, or we can open the uh, the angle of view. I want that to be within all those lines. Select the image plane node, go up in the inspector, and do some more adjusting until it all lines up. Okay, as you see in our reflection there, is actually a, it's too uh, vibrant. It looks too artificial. So we're going to correct that. Select the instance again. Go to controls. Visibility and check the back. Now go to materials. Let's start with the front one. Right click opacity. The instance. Put that at a 1.4. And we'll go right on down and do every one of them. Now I'm on the right, now I'll de-instance it. Right click on the opacity. De-instance. Right 
Right now we're just adjusting the opacity to the bottom box so it doesn't show exactly like the top. We're going to darken it a little bit, make it not so sharp. All right, sorry, I told you wrong on that. We got to go back and change them all to 0 0.4. Now straight away, if you look over at my two boxes, the bottom one looks more like a reflection than a picture. Don't really have to do anything with the bottom one. We'll just make that one black. Okay, let's animate this here. Start out with your playhead over the uh, zero frame at the beginning. With the instance selected and go up in the uh, inspector under transform. Translation X value we're going to use. That moves left and right. Rotation Y will move it uh, in a circle. That's the two values we're going to use, use to animate this.
move it off to one side or the other, and then set a keyframe on both of them. I'm going to go right, on, right around 120, frame 120. I just want one full rotation on the box as it comes out, but you can keyframe these and animate this to your liking. I do want to add a couple lights to this. Shift spacebar and let's look up ambient light. And a spotlight. Let's go back to dual viewer. This is the ambient light. It can go anywhere. Just get it up and out of the way. That lights the whole scene. This one here is a spotlight. It's the only light that'll cast shadows. I go up in the inspector, transform, with the spotlight selected. Select use target. That way the light will always be pointing in the right direction. And just grab the handles and move it to whatever position you'd like. I'm adjusting mine to the right of the scene. That way it'll cast a shadow on the left side of the cube. We do have to go to Render 3D and enable lighting and shadows.
drag your media out into the right viewfinder. Play with your lights till you're comfortable. See, we still have to do some adjustments here. Select the instance again. We want to bring that out to this area. We'll go up to them three dots and deselect the underlay so we know what we're looking at. That's what it's going to look like in the end. That black platform the cube's sitting on. Just keep tweaking things as we go till it looks good. But don't forget to select whatever node you want to adjust. Like the image plane, you want to select that node and adjust it like I am right now. If you want to adjust the light, select the light node and then adjust that. And so on and so on. Now select the instance. Go up in the inspector. And it's just the values to get the cube in whatever position you like. Just keep tweaking it till you're happy with it. If you end up with this issue with a hard cut shadow, then select your spotlight node, go up in the inspector and open the cone. Probably all the way, it's casting too much shadow on the left side of my cube. So go to ambient light, we'll add some of that. And that got rid of quite a bit of shadow. Now let's go up in the edit page and see how it looks. Render the cast, see how it plays. Are you going to add more light to it or 
take some away, whatever you want to do, you can just play with the adjustments. I'm going to add a little bit more ambient light to it. Back down to Fusion. This side's where our sun's coming from. That's the uh, spotlight. I'm going to tone that down just a little. All right, we'll let it render out and play again. Still not happy with the lighting. Let's hone down the intensity of the spotlight. Add just a little more ambient. I'm going to take that all the way up. Mine is. Add down just a hair. Before I forget, let's go to the spline down here in Fusion. You want to select all those? Go over here to fit the fill. Highlight them all. And select that. That'll smooth all the curves. Let it run to the cache once again. There you go, now it's nice and smooth. That's putting a cube on a, or pictures on a cube and with a background and a reflection on the ground. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.